A warm welcome to this talk. It's Friday the 6th of September. Now, I've heard about this phenomena years ago, of course, but only just got some evidence to support it, so we can only just report on it now. This is from peer-reviewed literature, and it's uh, scientists based in Japan and South Korea. And what they've done is they've taken COVID vaccines, mostly Pfizer and Moderna, and cultured them, incubated them, to try and duplicate the conditions in the human body, and they've found nanostructures have developed. Now, I don't expect you're going to watch this video or, or be allowed to watch this video, but I'm going to do it anyway. And if by some chance a few of you actually get to see it, then that's brilliant. Now, here's the equipment that was actually uh, used here. Uh, it's stereo microscopes. Now, basically, all this means is you're looking at it in, with two eyes. Therefore, you get stereoscopic vision. And what happened was that initially they developed two dimensional nanostructures and then some became three dimensional as well. And of course, you can see that with a stereo stereoscopic uh, microscope. Let's go and look at some now. That was the equipment that they were using. Uh, and of course, these days, you know, so much look down the microscope, it all goes on a screen so you can take uh, copies of it. Now, these are from the publication. These are the, some of the nanostructures that were observed in uh, as I've said before, uh, conditions that were designed to duplicate human cells in the human body that developed uh, from the COVID uh, vaccines, the, MR and, the mRNA vaccines. Now, the scale here, um, we'll, we'll look, well, I'll just show you a couple of pictures and we'll look at the scale. So these are the sort of structures that they were finding. I mean, what the heck is that? You know, that, that is a structure that spontaneously um, sort of put itself together, a spontaneous assembly of this structure from the COVID vaccine uh, cultures. Now the scale here, uh, 10, uh, 10 micrometers. Um, so that's, uh, so one, one micrometer would be, uh, one micrometer would be um, the size of a sort of a, a bacterial cell. Seven micrometers would be the size of a red blood cell. So you can see these are nanostructures, but this is a very detailed looking structure that has spontaneously assembled itself here. Really quite, uh, really quite, um, um, yeah, well, look at it, <laughs> you know, that, that, that spontaneously assembled itself. Uh, what the heck uh, is it? Um, now, uh, of course, as always, we don't have, uh, I won't be giving full answers to these questions. Read the paper for yourself. But this, th these, this means the presence of these nanostructures needs to be explained by the manufacturers and by uh, international authorising agencies and national authorising agencies around the world. This is a peer-reviewed publication and I believe it gives questions to be answered. Um, even if it's only that this is a load of rubbish, then that still needs to be, uh, still needs to be answered. Let's look at a couple more pictures before we look at the text. Um, so these spiral ones seem to come up. Again, spontaneously, just put themselves together. Spontaneous sort of, <laughs> another spiral there. Um, another one there. Tell you what, I don't like the idea of these spontaneously forming in the cells of my body, if that is indeed the case. We don't know that, but if that's the case, I don't like the idea of it at all. Not at all. And 10 micrometres, that's actually pretty big, actually. Um, if that's the scale there, 10 micrometres. Um, so this, this whole thing is actually, uh, is actually quite large, uh, relatively speaking. I mean, what is that? Spontaneously formed structure. Oh, that one. Anyway, lots more examples in the uh, paper. Do uh, look at it for yourself and check it out. The, the paper is there and the pictures are all there. Now, um, as I say, I don't think many people are going to be able to watch this video because I'm not optimistic about getting a wide distribution, shall we say. But never mind, we're going to do it anyway. Um, so real time, self-assembly, self-assembly, these things are bolting themselves together, as it were of stereoscopic, uh, stereo microscopically visible. So you can see them through the stereo microscope. Um, specimens of mRNA products, mainly from Pfizer and Moderna, a comprehensive longitudinal study. So construction in, constructions in incubated specimens of mRNA products is what these workers did. And our observations suggest the presence of some kind of nanotechnology in the COVID injectables. Now I'm, <laughs> I know what I'm, uh, I know this is sounds pretty um, uh, interesting material and I'm only I'm being very, very, very careful not to go outside of what the article is saying, the peer reviewed article is saying. And of course, I'll be giving you full references and everything for that. 
Um, so I'm being very careful in this in this video not to go outside what it's saying. Observable, observable real time injuries at cellular level in the recipients of the safe and effective COVID-19 injectables are documented here for the first time, hence the fact that we're doing it. I think this paper just came out a few days ago, last week maybe. With the presentation of a comprehensive description and analysis of observed phenomena that need to be explained. The global administration of these often mandated products from late 2020 triggered a plethora of independent research studies. Why weren't they nationally sponsored and industry sponsored research studies? Why is it down to independent scientists? And I have talked to uh, several other independent scientists who've come up with similar findings to this, but I can't talk about those because it's not published in the peer reviewed literature. We're going to stick to what is in the peer reviewed literature. Um, of, uh, of, of modified RNA injectable gene therapies. So, of course, they're injecting genetic material, instructing the body to make uh, foreign proteins. They are not injecting the protein directly. Most noticeably, those manufactured by Pfizer and Moderna in this paper. Uh, analysis report, uh, analyses reported here consists of precise laboratory bench science aiming to understand why serious debilitating prolonged injuries and many other side of this particular adverse reaction um, occurred increasingly without any measurable protective effect. Uh, the contents of the COVID-19 injectables were examined under a stereoscopic microscope up to, up to 400 times magnification. Um, carefully preserved specimens were cultured in a range of distinct media uh, to observe immediate and long-term cause and effect relationships between the injectables and living cells under carefully controlled conditions. In other words, I'm not saying these scientists succeeded in doing that, but what they were trying to do is duplicate living conditions in the laboratory bench where they could look at it under these microscopes. They were attempting to duplicate the physiological conditions of the human body. The degree to which they did that, I'm not really able to adjudicate on, but they, they did their best to do that. And again, this needs to be duplicated around the world and it needs to be explained because, I mean, heck, I mean, let's look at that. I mean, look at it. I mean, what is that? What are these things? Um, I mean, it's just, yeah. Uh, an explanation is clearly uh, required here. I would have thought. I would have thought. Let me know what you think. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, carefully controlled conditions from such... Research, reasonable inferences can be drawn about observed injuries. So they're saying that it's reasonable, that the, the, the researchers here are saying it's reasonable to uh, make inferences from what they're seeing in the laboratory to what would be happening in the body because they're trying to duplicate the conditions in the body. Of course, the study should be done in the body as well. This should be a, a, a great uh, trigger for future research um, done by authorised uh, institutions around the world and regulatory bodies around the world. This should be done to explain this. Don't hold your breath. Right. Uh, from such research, reasonable inferences can be drawn about obs uh, observed injuries worldwide that have occurred since the injectables were pressed upon billions of individuals. So they're saying that this, basically what they're saying is, I think this is a pathophysiological mechanism that could explain the adverse reactions or some of the adverse reactions that we are tragically seeing. And of course, we've interviewed uh, quite a few people now on this channel who've suffered uh, from this as well. Uh, in addition to cellular toxicity, as if that wasn't bad enough, uh, our findings reveal numerous on the order of three to four. So that's between, that's, that's 10 to the six. That's um, three to four million of these artifacts per mil of the injectable. Heck, that's four, that's four, one, two, three, one, two, three, up to, up to. Four million, between three and four million, dear me. Visible artifacts, self-assembling entities, self-assembling entities, ranging from about one micrometer to about 100 micrometers, 100 microns, or greater, of many different shapes. As we said, one, me one uh, micrometer is about the size of a bacterial cell. If you've got good young eyes, you could probably just about see an object of 100 micrometers. Uh, uh, it's a ten tenth of a millimeter, isn't it, with the naked eye, at, at a push. I probably couldn't at my age, but... Maybe with my glasses. Anyway, the researchers go on. They were animated worm-like entities, disc 
chains, spirals, tubes, right angled, stru right angled structures, right angled structures containing other artifacts, artifactual entities within them, artifacts within artifacts. All these are uh, exceedingly beyond any expected and acceptable level of contamination of the COVID-19 injectables. I would have thought three to four million per mill is way off the scale. Indeed. Uh, an incubation studies revealed the uh, progressive self-assembly, self-assembly of many artifactual structures. What the heck are they? As time progressed during incubation, Simple one- and two-dimensional structures over two or three weeks became more complex in shape and size developing into stereoscopically visible entities in three dimensions. These became three-dimensional structures in their incubated cultures designed to replicate the conditions inside the human body. Um, they resembled uh, carbon nanotube filaments, ribbons, tapes, some appearing as transparent thin flat membranes, others as three-dimensional spiral beaded chains. Some of these seem to appear then disappear over time. Our observations suggest the presence of some kind of nanotechnology in the COVID-19 injectables. Now this is directly from peer-reviewed literature. Um, I don't expect you'll see it. I suspect strongly that I am currently uh, talking to myself in a back room in Carlisle somewhere. Um, um, if some of you do get to see it, then you consider that a bonus. You can think about it. Um, now, I'll just give you some of the uh, references here for this. So this is the, uh, this is the journal here. Uh, International Journal of Vaccine Theory, Practice and Research. The International Journey of Journal of Theory, Practice and Research is a peer-reviewed scholarly open access journal uh, concerning the development, distribution and monitoring of vaccines and their components. All content is freely available without charge to the user or his, her institution, which of course is excellent. Users may read, download, copy, distribute, print, search or link the full text of articles or use them for any other lawful purpose. Permission is not required from the publisher nor from the author. But we do give them full credit, of course. Isn't this refreshing? <laughs> this is our work. We're reporting on it. And it's, it's free. It's in the public domain. It is the anti antithesis of the control, of the control agenda. That's so often we've seen with people not wanting to release papers for decades after the uh, research has been done. Very refreshing. So that is about the journal there. Um, the actual article itself is... Uh, have we got the article itself? Um, what do I do? Oh, there we go. That's the, that's the journal there. Uh, that's the full journal. And again, you can download the full journal. Quite uh, excellent. So that's the paper. That's the journal. I've downloaded it in PDF, of course. And that's the attribution, non-commercial, non-directive deed. I could quite fully understand that. But it, it just, it's great that it's basically uh, share. You are free to share. And uh, it's, it's, just, um, it's, it's just, and of course, we give full credit to the authors, which I will do now. Um, these are the authors here. Uh, physician, uh, Dr. Young Mai Lee, uh, Republic of Korea, and uh, Professor... Uh, Browdy, uh, Okinawa Christian University, Japan. And of course, the links, as always, are there to check them out for yourself. So what we've done is report on a peer-reviewed paper. It's in the scientific literature, as we've completely demonstrated in this video. I'm just sorry that um, I suspect that not many of you will get to watch this video, but there we go. Um, yeah, isn't that transparency refreshing and really refreshing to see that? This is our work. Look at it, share it, agree with it, disagree with it. Do further work to prove it. Do further work to say it's a load of rubbish. But it's there, open for public peer analysis. Brilliant. The antithesis to so much of the more commercial research of the past few years and decades. But for now... Look at the paper for yourself. Let me know what you think, if any of you actually get to see it. 
So, bye. Hope I'm not talking to myself, but thank you for watching if somehow you have. <laughs>